In 2019, I was playing for Syracuse University and I was diagnosed with grade three breast cancer. It was really random too, cause like I felt completely healthy. Like I felt fine. I was playing like the best basketball I'd played. Um, and then I felt a lump in my breast and I was like, ah, oh, it's fine. And then mum was like, you need to go get it checked. You need to go get it checked. And then um, I ended up going to get it checked. And then that's when um, I got a call from the doctor, like 8 a.m. And he explained that I had invasive ductal carcinoma. And I didn't know what that was. So I was like, what is this? Anyway, so then he told me that it's a form of breast cancer. And from there, I, it was like 3 a.m. in Australia. So I called my parents, my family. Um, we all like had a FaceTime call. And so when I was going through my treatment, my family was literally like my number one supporters. They scheduled a rotation where they could all take off work um, for, to be there with me for my infusions. Obviously this journey is now continuing for you. Do you mind sharing with us what this next phase looks like? Yeah, so recently, I think May, gosh, people, yeah, May, I was re-diagnosed um, with breast cancer. And um, I think it was a lot harder this time than last time. Um, because I'm older and like I think about having family and like a life and stuff and so it's like sometimes it gets difficult um I'm sorry D. okay um but like my family has been there for me so much do you mind actually explaining to us what metastatic breast cancer yeah. means so it just means that that it has spread into other areas of your body so in 2019, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, which hadn't spread. And so this year I was diagnosed with metastatic, which means it spread into other areas. The McGrath Foundation are a great resource. Mm -hmm. um, they have 100% free uh, McGrath breast care nurses mm -hmm. that are available for every person going through their cancer yeah. journey. I know you've started building a relationship with them as well. Yeah. What does that look like? It's actually surprising to me how amazing they are. Um, in Brisbane, I didn't have a, a McGraw breast care nurse um, just because I felt like, I don't know, I kind of felt like I was all good with the nurse at the hospital. Um, but moving down to Sydney is when I called them and I was like, hey, I'm moving. Is there any chance like I could connect as one of the, with one of the nurses? And I'm so glad I did. She was amazing. She had my schedule down pat. Um, she basically knew what the doctor was going to say before she said it. And I thought that was amazing. It gives me so much like confidence in her and gives me so much hope in myself that, you know, everything's going to be okay. What an amazing resource then that's free. How important do you think that is for so many people going through their breast cancer? It's so important. And I think now that I'm actually experiencing it firsthand, it's an amazing resource and I should have reached out earlier. I'm so grateful that I'm able to connect with them. It's just when you have a breast care nurse that really cares about you and knows so much about what you're going through and have helped other people going through it. Um, it's so helpful. And especially when I was in Syracuse, I had an amazing nurse who was there for me mentally and she was there for me through my infusions and it was just, that it makes such a big difference. It's so fantastic to know that that resource is actually valuable. Um, they're busy going through a process at the moment. Um, they've got 200 nurses across Australia. Their hope is to get to 250 by 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really just about funding and awareness. Yeah. What an amazing resource then that's free. Mm -hmm. How important do you think that is for so many people going through their breast cancer? It's so important and I think now that I'm actually experiencing it firsthand, it's an amazing resource and I should have reached out earlier um, when I was in Brisbane. It's so fantastic to know that that resource is actually valuable. Um, they're busy going through a process at the moment. Um, they've got 200 nurses across Australia. Their hope is to get to 250 by 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really just about funding and awareness. Uh, for anyone who you know thinks that they maybe want to get involved with the McGrath Foundation, yeah. how important do you think it is? I feel like it's very important. I think um, a lot of 
if there's nurses out there, you know, that aren't with the McGrath Foundation, but have been in the system for a long time, I think it's a great avenue for them because you're helping people who may not be able to afford it or that just need that little bit of extra help. And um, I know for a fact it's helped me since I've been down. Has there been anything, um, both this time and when you're in Syracuse, that's really surprised you along this unexpected life journey that's presented itself? I think I've surprised myself a lot, just like, oh, it's so hard though, because like sometimes I feel like I could be more positive, or sometimes I feel like I need, I could be more like, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like I could be like extra I don't know, positive than I already am. And my family like continued to remind me like, no T, like you're doing fine. Like, so I've definitely surprised myself in how I've handled this. And I think my family's helped me just being supportive and like uplifting, but just knowing that there's other things out there for me, you know, other than just being a professional athlete. Um, so I'm excited for what else I do in my life.